But anyway, I just wanted to make a quick comment. I think I'm the oldest person in this room. Um, but uh, let me just say that I've always found intergenerational work to be very useful. Some of you may know me. I created the Youth Assembly at the United Nations 14 years ago. And I've led and directed about 20 of those when we had the Millennium Development Goals. As it was my hope that with an uh, intergenerational focus, we could capture the energy of young people and the skills that older folks who have been here a while, I'm, I'm currently I'm a diplomat with uh, uh, a mission here, a uh, small state in Africa, Sao Tome and Principe. And um, in 2008, I met a young guy in Jordan who had never been to the UN and really wanted to come, and I brought him here. Uh, he has grown into Ahmed Al Handawi. Uh, he calls me brother. He's my very, very young brother, I guess. Uh, but I'm very proud to have brought him to the UN and uh, many other people, some who are here, uh, now who I think have become perhaps even more useful in their energy by learning more skills uh, from those who have tackled some of these questions before. As a matter of fact, Nero is staying with me now at my place in what is often called the Ahmed Room. And Miro and I were talking about uh, revolution and how Bernie Sanders uh, has been speaking about revolution. For those of you who are not American, he's running for the nomination here. And uh, I went back to a lot of the 60s and 70s, early 70s music that uh, uh, I know very well and some of which uh, I was involved in writing. And revolution can really move into a very ugly area. Uh, it can move into death and shooting, and perhaps we need a very different approach to uh, a green revolution, and it's encouraging hearing some of what you're saying. It's also encouraging noting that Miro has been very successful in putting together music competitions where young people are invited to use their creativity, something that really does open up new doors where we have not thought it possible to have great ideas in the past. Uh, I often think that young people don't really own anything. You know, most young people don't own a car or a home. What they really own is their understanding of culture. They know whether they like Lady Gaga or not. And they really own that, I think, much more than older people do. And having culture be a basis of the work, uh, as it was in the Youth Assembly, we often brought in uh, arts groups as well as policy wonks. Uh, to speak at the Youth Assembly, I think was very helpful. Uh, the company I used to direct for 22 years that led this brought groups of young people around the world to meet culturally first. And that was also, I think, uh, kind of useful to what we were doing. Uh, one of the things that the creativity enabled was a way for us to look at solutions in brand new ways. Uh, Elok Diaz, some of you may know him, he really uh, became well known during the Youth Assembly being covered on national TV here for his program One Liter of Light. Uh, for those of you who don't know One Liter of Light, just very briefly, I don't know if I only have a couple of minutes, I do. Okay, look it up, okay, <laughs> uh, Google it. It's a great, great program where he's really created the opportunity to bring light into homes of people who have no electricity by day and by night, and it's really a fantastic program. Another speaker uh, who used this opportunity to create some com really out-of-the-box ideas uh, was Tom Skazi, who's a youth who created TerraCycle. Look up TerraCycle.net. He's made a huge industry of recycling trash and making it um, uh, very useful. The thing that's, uh, that I wanted to conclude with is that in August, I'll be running a new program that is somewhat similar to the Youth Assembly, but the Youth Assembly became very generic, it became very costly, and uh, it's not exactly a program that I would advocate any longer, but uh, this program will be free and it'll have a certain focus each year. Uh, August 10, 11, and 12 will be the time of the uh, UN's International Youth Day, and we'll have the GA Hall, and I brought in uh, I've gotten a donor to back a program that will bring in 600 youth leaders from China in particular. I think as youth leaders start to grow in their BA and master's programs, they're starting to ask, so who is the UN and what are my responsibilities in such a great, large, and growing nation as China? 
And we don't see that many Chinese people in great numbers at these events. Uh, the Youth Assembly started to bring in a few hundred each year. But I wanted to make that a focus this year. Next year, we're going to look at a focus of how civic tech, the new kind of social entrepreneurship, uh, of, could affect the UN interns and fellows in order to enable them to learn more about new technologies that bring the opportunity for them as interns and fellows here at the UN to add more success to the organizations and agencies that they serve. If any of you are interested, Ihor Laboa is in the back there. I don't know, Ihor probably has a list. You can give us your name and email, and we'd be happy to invite you. It's a cost-less um, event, and uh, somewhat similar to this in that there'll be plenaries and breakouts, uh, but will probably also be celebratory in that the event will be around uh, uh, the um, International Youth Days. That's it, thank you very much. Um, thank you so much, that was very interesting. Actually, I'm sorry to use my, just for one minute, uh, your, uh, your contribution made me think that's another solution uh, we need to encourage is also be mentors to some extent. We were all once young and somebody helped us, brought us in UN or somewhere else. Um, and I think it's also responsibility for existing programs and organizations to mentor youth leaders. Um, and also youth organizations to help them to participate and so on. So I think that's also a solution because we all have children, nephews, nieces, and whoever, young people in our families and our, our, our communities. And I think and people who even come to, uh, to our work, our interns, um, I think it's our responsibility. Otherwise, there would be nothing after us. Um, so I think that, that's important. Um, but now Miroslav uh, yes. will, uh, will make his contribution. Thank you very much. Uh, so, my contribution is to the question number three. How can we set up a youth-focused resource mobilization and multi-stakeholder engagement support mechanism for climate action and SDGs implementation? And the point I want to make, it, uh, make is that uh, this needs a systemic approach. So, it's uh, really not possible uh, to really provide a meaningful and rewarding uh, uh, lasting uh, youth engagement in this SDGs implementation if there are not really very, uh, different stakeholders coming together, different United Nations organizations coming together and uh, also the information and communication technology uh, preconditions set up. And uh, here our organization, uh, IAI, International Association for the Advancement of Innovative Approaches to Global Challenges, the name is already a mission statement, has uh, uh, its uh, systemic uh, solutions uh, and uh, the, we call it the Youth Engagement Support Mechanism, YESM. Uh, and this is something we want to uh, get integrated into the United Nations uh, system, into the uh, UNFCCC process in uh, the run-up to the COP22. And this uh, system includes the resource mobilization component, uh, it's a blended finance uh, platform which uh, connects official development assistance money and also uh, global philanthropy money with local uh, resource mobilization by communities and also market near mechanisms. Then uh, another component is the information communication technology infrastructure. We have uh, explained these, uh, elaborated these uh, dimensions of uh, youth engagement at a conference in 2014 in Klagenfurt uh, where we've had uh, the uh, conference Sustainable Development, Innovation and Youth, Building the Knowledge Base and Information and Communication Technology Infrastructure for Youth Engagement in Sustainable Development Action. And then we need capacity building and public awareness uh, raising. Uh, we are working here with the United Nations Alliance on Climate Change Education, Training and Public Awareness and the Joint Framework Initiative on Children, Youth and Climate Change. And here also our initiative, Patrick has mentioned it, the Global Challenges Youth Music Contest is a very good uh, instrument to get young people engaged uh, to have an entertainment approach, ed ed entertaining young people uh, in their uh, engagement in climate action and sustainable development goals. 
uh, implementation. We ask young people to produce music video clips about what they uh, think sustainable development means, what uh, climate action means, and then uh, we uh, organize online voting and jury voting, and we have brought uh, well, two winners, one from the US and one from Indonesia, to COP21. We've uh, organized there a show, and the plan is at the COP22 uh, conference to have uh, a similar show, but much bigger, with celebrities' engagement. And uh, European Broadcasting Union is our partner there. They have said, uh, if we are uh, able to set it up on a high quality standard, that they will be our distribution partners globally, so that it can be really brought to every living room, so to say, these topics. And uh, this is then also the stage where we hope to uh, be able to attract uh, new global philanthropy leaders. Because uh, this uh, reduction of uh, inequality uh, within and among states, this is one of the big topics that uh, also very important for young people, because young people see there are no resources for them, uh, there are no uh, new jobs, uh, no income opportunities, but this needs to be changed and uh, we uh, have to motivate uh, and encourage uh, those wealth elites to really on a massive scale to provide resources for youth uh, engagement and also for young people to work on this SDGs implementation as micro social entrepreneurs. Because if young people take action, society should reward it, it should uh, provide a really a living uh, for this. and. It's, uh, if local communities cannot do it, or they can only do it partially, the global community should organize uh, in this effort. And uh, I'm convinced that the youth engagement support mechanism that we have developed, and you will find more details when you look at the Facebook page uh, where this event today has been announced, and on our home page, because it's uh, too much uh, to explain systemic innovation in five minutes. But it's uh, an effort uh, that where we think that uh, there's a huge need and a uh, huge opportunity and also the Yugo uh, constituency is working on similar topics because it's clear this is what is needed and if we join here forces I think that uh, very much can be achieved and also the momentum from COP21 towards COP22 is now also a great opportunity to attract uh, global philanthropy leaders uh, and celebrities and uh, media that they will uh, uh, they are joined this movement and Patrick has said uh, a revolution is needed. Uh, uh, it's not uh, really uh, the revolution perhaps. Ahmed is uh, using the better term. It's a new global social contract. And this SDG is being a new contract uh, where young people can be confident that uh, the overall society, the global society, is uh, shaping the world and governing the world in a way that young people have opportunities, they have a living, they have a future, and in this sense, uh, youth engagement support mechanism is needed. It needs to be UN system-wide, and everybody has to contribute resources. It's not only about funding, it's about knowledge, it's about creativity, it's about donating time. This kind of thing need uh, really information management uh, and uh, it needs uh, incentive mechanisms and we have the plan we have the music so uh, you're invited to work with us on this. Well, thank you very much it's very interesting how contributions sort of provided two sides of a perspective a local perspective from us and uh, an equator initiative on the local action and what can be done in each individual country and organization